CQDX, CQDX. Echo Alpha 5, Juliet Zulu. Echo America 5, Juliet Zulu, CQDX, over. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in my last video, I showed you the RS HF IQ HF SDR transceiver from Hobby PCB. Now, some of you quite rightly pointed out that using the HD SDR software with the HF IQ is not actually the best end user experience. However, in this video, I'll be showing you this product. This is a Pi SDR IQ from SV1 EIA over in Athens. Now this takes the IQ in and out from the HF IQ and allows you to either use the HF IQ over the network using power SDR, or you can even use it as a standalone radio. The Pi SDR IQ is essentially a Pi hat sitting on top of an orange Pi. With 123 dB of dynamic range, the ADC and DAC offers 192 kilohertz sample rate at 24 bits, essentially meaning you have the highest quality components to provide a high quality HF SDR transceiver. Now the Pi SDR IQ also supports other radios, such as the Flex SDR 1000 or the Softrock and Ensemble homemade radios. To connect the Pi SDR IQ to the HF IQ is fairly easy. The Pi SDR IQ has these available ports. Now the important ones to notice here are the power connection to the Orange Pi, the IQ out and the IQ in ports, and obviously the ethernet socket and the USB host ports. So first we need to connect a 3.5 stereo aux cable between the IQ in on the HF IQ and the IQ out on the Pi SDR. Next we connect the IQ out from the HF IQ to the IQ in on the Pi SDR. The orange Pi will need its own power, so with the provided power cable, we plug the barrel connector into the Pi SDR and the USB side plugs into a USB power supply, such as a mobile phone charger or something that can deliver between 2 and 3 amps at 5 volts. We then need to use another USB cable to go between the Pi SDR and the HF IQ. This is used to control the HF IQ like frequency or power. It's the same cable that we would have used to plug into a PC, but instead we're now plugging it into the Pi SDR. The last thing we need to do is plug in an Ethernet cable from your home network router to the Ethernet connection on the Orange Pi. Now you can also use a direct Ethernet connection to your computer, bypassing the router, but for this example, I'll be showing you the software running on my PC, which is connected to the router. Now lastly, we need to connect the power and antenna to the HF IQ. On the Pi SDR website, you'll find a very well written software and hardware installation guide. I'll leave a link below where you can download these for free. The hardware setup guide also includes wiring diagrams for the Pi SDR's connectors. And for those wanting to use this as a standalone radio solution, then the speaker mic jack and PTT jack wiring will be most useful. Now the software that we'll use today will be a special version of Power SDR, which has been compiled to contain specific features for the Pi SDR IQ. So from this website, download the executable and install the software. Now once installed, run Power SDR. The first time that you run Power SDR, you'll need to add the following radios by clicking the Add Legacy Radios button. Tick both the SDR1000 and Softrock options and then click OK. Now on the line which says SDR1000, click the Use button which will then launch PowerSDR. Now before clicking Start, click the Setup at the top left corner. Go to the Audio tab and select VAC1. Enable VAC1 and choose your Audio Output and Input. This will be your computer speakers and your computer microphone that you use for your transmitting audio. Then go back to the General tab and select the Pi SDR tab on the right. With your Pi SDR and RSHF IQ all powered up, go ahead and click on the List Refresh button. Here, Power SDR should discover the Pi SDR IQ on your network. Click Select and then click OK to save the settings. You can now click the Start button on the top left and you should now start to hear what the RSHF IQ is receiving. 
Now using the mode and band buttons on Power SDR will control the HFIQ and allow you to scan around the bands just like a normal radio. Zero one two, thank you, QRZ, India United Four, Canada Hotel Eco Contest. CQDX, CQDX, CQDX. Echo Alpha Five, Juliet Zulu. Echo America Five, Juliet Zulu, CQDX. Over. CQ Contest, WAE, outside Europe, India United Four, Canada Hotel Eco Contest. So as you can see there, there was a contest on that particular day that I was recording this video. Anyhow, with this solution, I'm also able to transmit using my computer microphone. So I hooked up a 100 watt HF amplifier to the RS-HF-IQ and I made a contact. Now the amplifier I'm using here is the XPA-125B 100 watt amplifier with a built-in tuner. Now I did make a dedicated video on this amplifier, so if you want to know more about it, go and have a look at that. Anyhow, here's the QSO. Mexico Zero Delta Queen Whiskey. Uh, Mexico Zero Delta Quebec. Yeah, it's Mexico Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey QSO. Uh, Quebec Whiskey uh, QSO. Thanks very much, uh, Matt. Good afternoon. Nice to hear you again. Five nine plus into Orkney Islands QSO. Yeah, QSL, Jeff, thank you very much. Just trying a new radio this afternoon. It's a hobby PCB RS HFIQ. A bit of a tongue twister there, but it's a 5 watt SDR radio and uh, just trying it out with an amplifier this afternoon. But you're sounding great. 5, 9 plus 20 uh, down into Buckinghamshire, uh, down in the south. Microphone back to you. Yep, very good, Matt. Well, excellent. Uh, the audio sounds very, very nice indeed. Very smooth, very clear. No distortion or uh, uh, intermodulation. So uh, it's, it's working very well, and you're peaking uh, 5 to 10 dB over. So uh, a great signal. Anyway, thanks a lot. Nice to see you again, uh, Matt. Have a good weekend, and good luck with the new rig there. Mike Zero, Delta Queen Whiskey, Germany, Mike 8, Oscar, Fox, Quebec. 73. Yes, 73. Take care. Bye-bye. So there we had a QSO with Jeff from the Orkney Islands and surprisingly he commented on the quality of audio. Now I'd not previously altered any of the TX EQ settings and the only button that I pressed was the DX button which I believe adds a slight compression to my audio. Now the audio that you heard from me was coming via the monitor feature of Power SDR, so it was slightly narrow on bandwidth which was used for transmission. Now I mentioned earlier that the Pi SDR IQ could also be used standalone without a computer. So for this to work, you will need to use a different SD card image. The image is a free download from Pi SDR website. And once downloaded, you just need to write this image to a different SD card. Once you have the image written to another card, remove the original card from the orange Pi and insert the new one. It's all configured and it will work straight out of the box. Now with the standalone version, you just need to connect a monitor to the HDMI port on the orange Pi. Also, you'll need to add a mouse and keyboard to one of the USB connections. For audio in and out, you'd use the speaker mic 3.5mm aux connection on the orange Pi. A manual PTT can be used on the PTT-CW port on the orange Pi, but the software pre-installed on this standalone image has a PTT button, which you would then control using the mouse. Now the standalone image comes pre-installed with Quisk, which is the main SDR software to receive and transmit using the Pi SDR along with a compatible radio such as the RSHFIQ. If you're also into digital modes, there's a suite of digital applications already installed on this image and it's fairly easy to set up and use. A setup guide is available on the Pi SDR website dedicated to the standalone version, but if you have any issues, drop a comment below and I'll be glad to help out. Oscar Mexico 7 Mexico contest. 
Thank you, Qantas. Oscar EQ3 Kilo. Ocean EQ3 Kilowatt. Qantas. Now, one of the popular digital modes is FTA, and with the pre installed WSJT application, it's all ready to go. All you need to do is add your call sign and locator into the settings of WSJT, then launch Quisk, then change the band you want to work in on WSJT, and you're ready to go. WSJT is already configured to control Quisk's frequency, and the audio routing between the two applications is already configured. So here we can see plenty of stations being received and decoded on FT8. And though I haven't had much experience with FT8 yet, here we can see that I work a station in Russia, RD4D. Just to point out, for this test, I was not using an amplifier. For this, I was just using the standard 5 watts that the RS HFIQ is capable of. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I find it amazing at what technological advances have been made in the world of amateur radio. If you'd like to purchase an RSHFIQ from Hobby PCB or the product shown in this video, the Pi SDR IQ from Pi SDR, then I'll leave the links in the description below. Don't forget to tell them that you saw it first on the Tech Minds channel. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.